Now, development of face. So you are finding this is head fold, isn't it? So in this head fold, what you are finding, this is the lateral view. That means whole embryo is not shown here. Only a part of the embryo, only half of the embryo is shown. This is the pericardium region. Don't bother about it. See, this head fold, this is the lateral view and this is the front view. First was the side view and now you are drawing it from the anterior aspect. This front view. Niharika, are you understanding? Uh -huh. So this front view, then first pharyngeal arch, another name is mandibular arch. Okay? Just now we did, right? Uh -huh. So now this head area is actually called as frontonasal process. Okay. Below frontonasal process, you will see mandibular arch. Not only so many arches are formed, but close to the head, the arch is mandibular arch. Okay. Yeah. Yes, so this mandibular arch is further subdividing into two. Don't bother about pericardium. You can just close it, not required. So what are the two subdivisions of mandibular arch? Maxillary and mandibular. Process. Maxilla, very good. Maxillary process and mandibular process. Okay. This is frontonasal process. How it is growing? Let us see. So this mandibular process of right and left side is fusing in the center. Okay. Niharika? Oh. Yes, ma'am. Yes, better. Okay. Then if you understand. Then this is maxillary process. Then this is frontonasal process, I said, right? Yes, ma'am. Uh, so in this frontonasal process, we have two things which are supposed to develop in future. One is lens placode. Lens placode means it will form future eye. Oh, but... Okay? Yes, Nasal placode. That means it forms future oh. nose. Okay? Then, see here, this frontonasal process, nasal placode area is folding. Eye area has hmm. become very much corner. Okay, just a minute, but there is some important call. Try to learn these pictures. So we start here. See, this is completely frontonasal process. We have lens plug code, nasal plug code. So lens plug code is moving more laterally, and nasal plug code is invaginating invaginating and it is forming two processes near the midline you call it as medial nasal process away from the midline we have lateral nasal process okay and in between overall right from the first we have named it as frontonasal process only frontonasal process so as the nasal uh, like uh, plug code is growing the frontonasal area will reduce if you end to grow in a good the area tagupunta put it okay you see here the frontonasal area this is medial nasal process this is na lateral nasal process this is nasal pit now you see here as you come down the frontonasal area will gradually reduce you, you can exclude these two pictures better first picture you draw this second picture you draw this third this fourth this skip these two and you see this Medial nasal process and lateral nasal process, frontonasal area has reduced very much. Isn't it? It was little wide. Now you have to show it less. Frontonasal. It, it comes like Tagukunta Kutta, the front, because right and left nostril should come very close. And this frontonasal process will remain as nasal septum. Okay. This blue area is maxillary process, and pink area is mandibular process. Okay. Now see here, finally you draw the complete face and derivatives will be written here. See frontonasal process is forming nasal septum and the middle part of the upper lip. Okay, and from the mandibular process, the whole of the mandible, lower lip and the lower part of the face is developed. From maxillary process, whatever bluish area is shown, that is all developed from the maxillary process. Then eyes are formed from the lens plug cord. Nose, right and left nostrils are formed from the nasal plug cord. Okay. So like that, everything is written here. 
upper part of cheek from axillary process lower part of cheek from mandibular process okay step wise whatever is written down and whatever is written along the diagram only you write you need not study also what is given in the text don't waste time is it clear niharika yes ma'am ha ah, okay so after this is pharyngeal arches only beta inda ka manam chadukunnam kada six arches ostay ani adhe malli draw chesadu avasaram led ikkada we don't require here so varieties of hair lip hair lip in the sense like see this upper lip how is it formed see it is formed from the lateral part of the upper lip from the maxillary process central part of the upper lip is from fronto nasal process suppose if they are not fusing then gap remains that's what is called as cleft so different that you can ju just draw like degrees of clefts rough diagram you draw it a varieties of hair lip okay the maxillary process of left side has not properly fused fronto nasal process is not properly fused and there may be a gap which is continuing up to the nostril different varieties of hair lip we are finding okay that is this is very popular question beta oblique facial cleft that means what in case of oblique facial cleft you are finding the maxillary process of right side and left side have not fused with the fronto nasal process mm -hmm. then this maxillary process has actually moved towards the angle of the eye that means a gap remains like this okay which is moving from the upper lip to the eye cleft is formed you call it as oblique facial cleft okay mm -hmm. oblique facial cleft macrostomia and microstomia has never been asked if the size of the mouth is too big you call macro if the size of the mouth is too small you call it as microstomia okay proboscis and all not required only oblique facial cleft you read four or five lines will be written and you draw this picture okay niharika small apathic maxillary process fuse kaledu aa gap eye varaku elli poyindi itlaage gap undi potadu danne oblique facial cleft antunna palate development is very important beta hard palate soft palate we have paranasal sinuses nobody will ask no for palate development what all you should draw see here when we were doing the development of face i told you we have maxillary process right hmm this one maxillary process mandibular process mandibular arch right so this yes, maxillary process is first diagram you keep as c beta c1 because maxillary process here all the pre maxilla you may get confused not required see this is one maxillary process this is one more maxillary process and we know like we have fronto nasal process forming nasal septum just now i told you sure. yes niharika yes ma'am oh. so this nasal septum is now growing towards the palatal processes which have formed from maxillary process from maxillary process we have palatal processes okay they will start growing towards each other what happens is palatal process will fuse and the nasal septum area this area also will fuse and due to differential growth of all these areas you will see complete palate will be formed see this now what you do is how many pictures you should draw c as number 1 d as number 2 okay and the color like palatal processes has been shown in pink okay and this uh, fronto nasal process has been shown in green color rest blue area is maxillary process okay that means they are growing from that particular area better keep this picture also so they are starting to grow towards each other in the midline to form complete fusion and to form hard palate here complete fusion is shown okay so this anterior aspect of the palate is formed from fronto nasal process okay this is also called as pre maxilla and this particular area is formed from maxillary process 
remaining area whole thing is maxillary process okay this much you write then hard palate um hard palate palate means hard palate only soft palate is only soft tissue no mesodermal derivative nobody will hmm. ask you soft palate just show soft palate is growing like this palate hmm. development is important okay this what are these name them no labeling Max excellent yeah maxillary processes what are these palatal processes palatal processes contonasal nasal they are fusing suppose if they don't fuse properly gaps undi potunnai fusion sariga jaragagunte okay that's what is different varieties varieties of cleft palate a is complete cleft draw this and write whatever is given down beta a is complete cleft with bilateral hair lip okay that means two complete halves of the palates which have not fused okay b is unilateral cleft palate c is like uh, and you write oh. whatever point has been given here okay c is middle cleft d is cleft of soft palate e is bifid uvula that is the part of soft palate okay that is all about palate development is that clear Yes, ma'am. Soft palate uh, is not important, ma'am. No, beta. Question will be just development of palate. That's it. So there, soft palate we don't have any separate explanation. Okay, because it is a mesodermal derivative which is just attached to the part of the hard palate. It will have muscles, no? Mm -hmm. Okay. So soft palatine muscles they are developing from the Uh, generally, just now we have studied the pharyngeal arches, kada beta. Akka nunchi ostai. Okay, hard palate. You have to talk about all this. Okay, whatever is given and whatever we are seeing, only that thing you read and you write, beta. Okay. Yes. Ah. Clinical scenario not required. Development of AC. Question comes like this only. Development of palate. Cleft mm -hmm. palate means defects. anomalies of only very good like same questions which are usually asked are written here all four are important yes. okay. then we have elementary system here we have teeth and all is not required tongue development is important development of tongue is very important See here. So we know we have pharyngeal arches, right? How many pharyngeal arches we have? Oh, there are six, ma'am. But fifth one will be very good. So uh, at the level of pharyngeal arches, we will see the development of first arch level. You will see lingual swellings, tubercular impar, foramen cecum. Second arch, nothing. Remember, second arch is not contributing. Third and fourth arch level, what do we have? Hypobronchial, hypobronchial eminence. Okay, no, you need not draw the complete pharyngeal apparatus. Draw only this: lingual swellings, tuberculum impar, foramen cecum, hypobronchial eminence, which is further subdivided into cranial part and caudal part. Now, they will draw exactly what is given here, beta. They will start growing, and they will finally fuse. anterior two thirds of the tongue is formed from where lingual swelling the posterior mm -hmm. part of the anterior two thirds of the tongue is formed from pink area tuberculum impar there you will have a hole that is the foramen cecum sulcus terminalis central area foramen cecum we have already studied in gross anatomy then mm -hmm. posterior one third of the tongue where you have so much of lymphoid tissue no that is developed mm -hmm. from the cranial part of the hypobronchial eminence from the caudal part we have epiglottis okay so what is the nerve of first arch mandibular nerve that means lingual swellings tuberculum impar area will be supplied by which nerve mandibular nerve isn't it then cranial part second arch nerve is facial third arch nerve is glossopharyngeal right Fourth arch nerve is 
superior laryngeal and a glossopharyngeal and superior laryngeal also will supply this bluish area okay for which no there is a table see once you draw this no i want you to draw number 1 this picture 2 3 and 4 these pictures and just write this table full information is given here whatever i told you is given here okay so this you learn okay for the development of tongue it gives nerve supply also very important any your tongue is an essay question so part of essay will be development of tongue also nothing will be asked beta parotid gland development suppose if it comes because parotid is an essay just give one point like it is developing at sixth week arises from ectoderm okay ectoderm word is important even in our textbook also two points are only given you can write only that much usually embryology uh, development of parotid won't be asked also now next we have is Uh, GAT. So basically, like I said, foregut, midgut, hindgut. These are the derivatives of which germ layer? Endoderm. Endoderm. Very good. Endoderm. What is this connection? Yesterday you asked me. Yeah, I can't. You didn't understand. Connecting. Ah, uh, nodal card. Ah, connecting stock, right? So connecting stock will be connected to. yolk sac future connecting stock forms what umbilical cord very good umbilical cord umbilical cord connects which structure to which structure placenta to the fetus uh, fetus placement excellent very yeah. good very good okay so foregut midgut hindgut see here you should know the derivatives of foregut you should know the derivatives of midgut and hindgut list you should know so the four gut derivatives are shown in pink color that means esophagus stomach first part and the upper half of the second part of the duodenum mid gut derivatives are shown in green color that means second half of the duodenum third and fourth part of the duodenum dji jejunum ileum cecum appendix ascending colon right two thirds of the transverse colon That is mid gut, hind gut. What do we have? Left one third of the transverse colon, descending well, colon, sigmoid yeah. colon, rectum, and anal gut. These are the derivatives of hind gut. Okay. Then we have associated glands also with the fore fore gut. So what are the associated glands we have? We have liver. Okay. Then. non digestive organs like spleen that is actually a hemolymphoid organ okay so derivatives list will be given beta four gut derivatives list is there read it draw this picture also anything can be us either four gut or mid gut or hind gut okay here it is yes ma'am so mid gut then derivatives of hind gut now each part of the gut will have a special artery what is the blood supply of stomach what is the main artery you are saying yes gastric and the many arteries is supplying no ma'am but main artery is somewhere from where branches come out anybody rohiliac uh, artery rohita celiac trunk excellent celiac trunk so that means four gut artery is celiac trunk can anybody tell me what is the name of the mid gut and hind gut arteries kirti puram anybody okay four gut artery rohita says it is celiac trunk mid gut artery is superior mesenteric artery hind gut artery is inferior mesenteric artery inferior mesenteric artery okay so we have three blood vessels like super like celiac trunk superior mesenteric artery and inferior mesenteric artery that's the reason see here see mid gut artery here it is written as vital line no so which artery is finally it is named as mid gut artery is superior mesenteric artery okay
ओके नो डेरिवेटिव्स ऑफ द गट्स यू नो आर्टरीज ऑफ इज लाइक सिलिया कार्टरी यू नो सुपीरियर मिसेंट्रिक यू नो इंफीरियर मिसेंट्रिक यू नो नो चेकिंग व्हाट आर इंपॉर्टेंट Duodenum development may be important already. You know, but it is coming at the junction of foregut and midgut. Above this major uh, duodenal papilla that is derived from foregut, below it is derived from midgut. Hence, upper part is uh, like supplied by celiac trunk branches. Lower part is supplied by the branches of superior mesenteric artery. Again, foregut, midgut, hindgut is shown with different colors to make us understand easily. Okay. So midgut is further divided into two segments actually. What is the midgut artery? Superior mesenteric artery. Yes, very good, Niharika. Superior mesenteric artery. now suppose this is midgut loop and this is superior mesenteric artery above the loop you call it as pre arterial segment below the loop you call it as post arterial segment instead you see this direction it becomes easy see this is all midgut so in the midgut the, the artery is superior mesenteric artery See above the artery, this area is called as pre-arterial segment. Which color is used for pre-arterial? Blue color. Below the artery, what is the name of the segment? Niharika. Rohita. Niharika. Ma'am, I am leaving class now. I'll join again, ma'am. Okay. What happened? Okay, let her join again, but again she will not understand. Let's wait. Niharika has joined from Delhi. Ma'am, 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 you tell, ma'am. I am listening, ma'am, but uh, like I cannot uh, speak, ma'am. Again, you will tell you didn't understand, no? But that's why I keep asking. Okay. Thank you. Uh, just, but at least let me know if you are understanding, because this is rotation of gut. You should be very careful. Okay. One of you talk to me. Rohita, keep talking to me. Okay. See here, mid gut loop we have. Like uh, there is one artery here that is superior mesenteric artery. Above that artery, what do you call it as? Kirti. pre arterial segment very good below the artery post arterial segments of midgut loop very good now this midgut will start rotating which is actually called as midgut rotation we will see now how it is rotating are you midgut uh, this this rotation of gut very very important topic this is rotation of gut before we go to rotation of gut let us Go with uh, like formation of anal canal. Anal canal is a say no. The terminal part of the anal canal is actually formed from the hind gut, okay. And the lower part of the anal canal is coming from ectoderm. So, if you see just this tube, this tube, beta. Blue in color is last area, no? So this cloacal membrane. This is proctodium. Proctodium is ectoderm area. This cloacal membrane. So from cloacal membrane, you will see anal canal is formed. That means half of the anal canal is. That means upper half of the anal canal is coming from endoderm, and lower half of the anal canal is coming from ectoderm. Kirti, at the main, na? Yes, ma'am. Ha. Madhyalo, you will see during embryological development there will be anal membrane, 
which disappears okay and these anal valves columns and all we have discussed when we were doing gross anatomy of anal canal so whatever has been shown in yellow color that is endodermal derivative blue in color is ectodermal derivative ectodermal derivative okay now see here rotation of gut so in rotation of gut what we are finding this is foregut this blue and green are midgut remaining part is hindgut so what is this artery it the midgut artery midgut uh, um pre uh, superior celiac artery no no no, no. you are right superior mesenteric artery beta superior mesenteric artery celiac yes, trunk is for foregut but this yes, we have celiac trunk superior uh, mesenteric artery superior mesenteric yes, artery so this like yes, you are finding brown area no beta yes, this is umbilicus during embryological yes, development basically loops of intestines are outside the body of the fetus anni intestine coils bite unnai annattu embryological development appudu gradually they will be pulled inside by the mechanism of rotation of gut okay yes ma'am yes ma'am see here this is pre arterial segment which is shown in blue color learn all these steps like this only one by one so initially yes, we are finding pre arterial segment was above the artery post arterial segment was below the artery now in the sec second artery is not shown but pre arterial segment seems to lie on the right side of the artery post arterial ikkada artery ostadi madhyalo red line draw cheyaledi ikkada draw chesadu malli pre arterial segment is on right side of the artery post arterial segment is on left side of the artery okay now the pre arterial segment is growing ante duodenum jejunum ileum anni form chestundi post arterial segment kuda grow aitundi okay then yes ma'am see here initially this pre arterial segment was on right side ipudu chudandi this left is left side ah it has turned and it has come on the left side okay this stomach tarvata edaithe undo mottham duodenum duodenum tarvata jejunum jejunum tarvata yes ma'am ileal coil ikkada cecum ochindi cecum appendix ascending on ఇట్లా ట్రాన్స్ఫార్మ్ అవుతుంది అన్నట్టు ఓకే ద ప్రీ ఆర్టీరియల్ సెగ్మెంట్ హ్యాస్ షిఫ్టెడ్ ఇట్ సెల్ఫ్ టు ది లెఫ్ట్ సైడ్ లెఫ్ట్ సైడ్ అండ్ గ్రాడ్యువల్లీ పోస్ట్ ఆర్టీరియల్ సెగ్మెంట్ హ్యాస్ షిఫ్టెడ్ టు రైట్ సైడ్ రైట్ సైడ్ వెరీ గుడ్ పోస్ట్ ఆర్టీరియల్ సెగ్మెంట్ నుంచి ఏమ వస్తున్నాయి బెటర్ చూడండి సీకమ్ వెరీ గుడ్ సీకమ్ అపెండిక్స్ పిక్చర్స్ వెరీ కేర్ఫుల్ you will see how the cecum which was there on the right side it has gradually like cecum moves to the right and transverse colon lies in front of the superior mesenteric artery okay me own words lo kuda raichu beta nen edaithe words cheppanu adi e raayandi yes ma'am ha yes ma'am idantha avasaram ledhu beta idi little confusing ga untadi ide pettesukondi easy Yes, Raining better suddenly. so that was midgut rotation rotation of gut 
So once we are done with rotation of gut, fixation not required, but there is a condition called as Meckel's diverticulum. Very, very important, Meckel's diverticulum. So what is Meckel's diverticulum? Small persistent part of vitello-intestinal duct. That means that uh, umbilical cord area where we have that vitello-intestinal duct, it may sometimes remain persistent and it may remain, it may open outside from the anti-mesentric border of ileum. That means from the ileum, there is a tube which is coming outside. In the newborn baby, ileum nunchi oka tube abdomen bite a pistundi. A tube is from Meckel's diverticulum. Okay, yes, which is nothing but persistent part. Idi unda kudu disappear kawale, but it is still persisting. It is supposed to disappear, but still it persists. Okay, that persistent part of vital or intestinal duct, which is seen attached to the ileum and which is seen opening outside the body, that is nothing but Meckel's diverticulum. The length may be around two feet also. Sometimes it may be seen at ileocecal junction. Okay, it may be sometimes two centimeters in length. So surgical importance is because it is a diverticulum, any infection can happen there and it may undergo inflammation. And this inflammation may give the clinical symptoms like appendicitis. Okay, that much you remember better for Meckel's diverticulum. This is not required, Peter. Now here you have Meckel's diverticulum. See, anomalies. Vital or intestinal ducts. First thing what you are seeing is Meckel's diverticulum. Okay. So Meckel's diverticulum from the terminal ileum you are finding there is one outward pouch. The difficulty is when it opens outside, it may get inflamed and infected. Okay. You can draw only first picture that is enough for Meckel's diverticulum. So these are all abnormal errors of rotation. Beta. So sometimes coils of intestines will lie outside the um, like uh, umbilicus. That means they are seen outside the body cavity. You call it as examphalus. Examphalus. So tracheoesophageal fistula. What is the meaning? There is a communication between trachea and esophagus. The food may enter into the trachea, air may enter into the esophagus. Trachea ki esophagus ki madhyalo abnormal communication ustundi. You call it as tracheoesophageal fistula. Cecum appendix is coming from midgut. Duodenum, foregut and midgut. So derivatives of all the three parts you have to remember. So liver and hepatic, uh, this remaining chapters we will do tomorrow because link may go within less than one minute, okay? So how many chapters do you have? Let me see. We are in 14th chapter, right? Fourteen, fifteen. Mm, tomorrow we will finish with the most probably. Urogenital, nervous, endocrine. Yeah. Probably we may finish.